You're listening to the Kick Your Boots Up podcast, where we swap stories of the West. Whether you're just waking up or getting in for the day, come on in and kick your boots up. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kick Your Boots Up podcast. I'm your host, Taylor McAdams. Thank you all for listening week to week. We're getting some really great feedback. We're having a lot of fun. And I figured since we're having a lot of fun, we've got to bring on another fun guest. This week's guest is a pretty well-known photographer. He's traveled all across the United States, all across the world. Um, The kids love him. The moms love him. Everyone loves him. He's a rodeo professional from Nacogdoches, Texas. Um, He's had photos featured in Cowboys and Indians blogs, Cowgirl Magazine blogs, Breakaway Roping Journal, Barrel Horse Journal, Barrel Horse Horse News, Cowgirl Magazine's um, blogs, all the things. He's gotten to um, photograph prestigious rodeos such as the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, the National Little Riches Rodeo Finals, the NBHA Youth World, Rodeo Austin, Cinch Time Event Champion. Championships. The list goes on and on and on. There's there's a million uh, different things that we can say, and I think what better way to get the the guest introduced and to let him talk about himself than introduce him and and let him explain his story. So, ladies and gentlemen, none other than J- Mr. James Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Photography, photos photography by Pfeiffer, Rodeo Bum Photography. Some of you out there might know him. James, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today and share your story. Yeah, how are you? How are you today? Yeah, doing good. Doing good. Thanks for being here. I know there's a lot, you know, that you have to going on right now in the different rodeos. Um, But I guess let's just get started. I I know that your name is James K. Pfeiffer. And inquiring minds out there want to know, what does the K stand for in your middle name? Uh, it It actually stands for Kenneth, which was actually my daddy's first cousin. Uh, His name was Kenneth Pfeiffer, and he survived the Bataan Death March in World War II. Oh, wow. What an incredible honor and memory for him. That's that's just yeah. awesome. And I've got to ask you, are you originally from Nacogdoches, Texas? No, I'm actually originally from Rusk. Uh, my family has been from uh, Rusk, which is Cherokee County. They've been there since uh, 1828. Oh, wow. A long time. Lots long of history long. there. Then mm-hmm. I've got to ask you, too, what was life like growing up for you? Oh, it was great. We had we had all kinds of places to go hunt. We fished, we hunted all the time. Uh, my daddy was a hunting guide over in Rusk. He was he was one of the very first people who ever guide, uh, do hunting guide service in East Texas. So uh, back in the eighties. Do you still love hunting today? Then oh, love it, love it. We go hunting and fishing all the time. So it's like that's that's what we do whenever we're between going to rodeos and stuff like like in a few weeks we're going to go to uh, georgia one of the girls that works for me they've been wanting me to go to uh georgia and go bear hunting for several years and we're going to go bear hunting here in a few weeks so oh so, well then we, i can't help but ask bear. what are some <laughs> what are some bear hunting tips because i've been watching that show on netflix that's like survival of um you it's you you they get left out in the woods and there's bears everywhere and they have these sprays <laughs> and these noises what's your plan of attack like what's going on if you actually do get attacked by a bear oh i have bear? no idea <laughs> I have no idea. We're just going bear hunting. We don't know anything. <laughs> uh, her uh, uh, her husband, uh, he, he they, they go hunting bears all the time over there. And they've been wanting me to go for years, but just scheduling wise, couldn't ever get over there. And then I had two rodeos that went on top, top of them that, or one of them moved it and everything. So all of a sudden we had an open date and it was like, well, we're going to go then. So, <laughs> Oh my gosh. I am so excited to follow that. You'll have to post it on your social media and update yeah. there because hopefully you'll go to hunt and not be hunted. Right. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> because that sounds like something would happen. To oh my gosh. I know. And that's what I love about your social media is like in between the rodeos, whenever, even when you're at rodeos in between the perfs, you will see, be seen going fishing and all that stuff. So I love that you get to kind of take a little bit of a break too and and go Mm -hmm. bear hunting. Check that off your list. I hope you (laughs) are super successful there. Um, But kind of moving on a little bit to the photography aspect. um, Did you ever think about being a photographer when you were younger? Did you always want to be a photographer? Uh, I didn't really think about it as a living, but I've been shooting photos since I was in fifth grade. And then uh, uh, then I kind of, when I was in high school, school started doing it for a living shooting some portraits or whatever but never really thought about that but then whenever I started shooting rodeos then that's whenever it was like this is going to be it here because I mean it was like okay now I know what I'm going to do I mean literally from the very first very 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 first uh time I ever shot a rodeo I was like because I've been gonna get gonna gonna 
bring my camera out there was they was having a little buck out at uh, close to the house and I was going to go out there and shoot it. But then, but whenever I very first did it, it was like, no idea. No, 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 no doubts. I was like, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. So, and then wow. I was actually in high school whenever I did that. So, and there's so much there too, because you said fifth grade, what were you taking pictures of in fifth grade? Did it start as a school assignment? No, just, we were, we went on a vacation to uh, Colorado and that was when I took my very first photo and I was like, oh, I like it. And then I was in like 4-H and FFA and stuff like that there. So, um, so that's, that's kind of what got me started was in like 4-H going, you know, entering contests in the county fair or whatever. So that there's kind of, kind of got it started in the photography part of it. And then I was also always around rodeo all my life. Like my brother, my brother, he's, uh, like nine years older than me and he rode bareback horses. So, so, uh, and then my cousin, uh, on their side of the, on, on their daddy's side of the family, like pretty much everybody rodeos on that side of the family. So, so I was always around rodeo and I've been shooting photos since I was in fifth grade. So it just eventually came together. So. Wow. And that's incredible. There's a lot there. And before we dig too deep, too much deeper into it, I'm genuinely curious, what was it like then? Because there's, there's, rodeo photography and there's photography and it's two different ball games what oh, was it like for you to finally master the action those those really good action shots that are really challenging oh and it, this was in the film days and it was like there was no like looking in the back of your camera or anything like that there you had to you do it and you didn't find out for several days to what you even got and and that very first deal was in the daylight it was a very rare thing to have daylight but then i had to start trying to figure out how to do the do the ones at night and it was like that took a while and then get the right equipment that could that could light it up and i mean it took a little while and it was it was difficult you know and then in the film days i mean it's like every single time you pushed a button it cost you money i mean like if you like let's say somebody top knotted a calf it was like and you accidentally took a picture you just went oh god it's like that just cost me money because it cost you to film. It cost you to process it. I mean, it did, it, it cost you to print the photo or uh, print your proof sheets. I mean, it was like, Oh, so you made dang sure you never wasted a single, single shot. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's something I didn't even think about too. And and even you mentioned that back in the film days when there were film cameras, you know, that they actually used, um, cause now people, you know, photographers will do that for fun and different looks, yeah. but it's not as quick as today either, because I feel like to get those action shots nowadays, you can just click, 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 or click one time. And it just takes a bunch of shutter, shutter speed takes yeah. a bunch of photos. What was it like then? Cause you almost had to have the patience to like wait and track the bull just to make sure it's, um, back end was kicked up just right. Or yeah. when you're tracking a calf, same thing. How, what was it like just waiting patiently to get the perfect moment? Well, you still have to do that nowadays. Cause it, cause like in Texas, pretty much or pretty much probably out of the say 185 uh, perps a year I do a year uh, nearly every single one of them maybe five perps a year are in the daylight nearly every single thing's at nighttime so I'm using strobes so still it doesn't matter what it is I have to still be patient and, and shoot it because you have to wait for your flashes to go off because you can't just sit there and just push it down and let it do it you have to wait for it so so it's still that way today if you're shooting with strokes so but but back then though you couldn't even like just waste anything you couldn't sit there and go like now like say a typical calf roping photo I get the traditional coming off and then you know flanking the calf and then you know this right here you know I can do some extra stuff there well back then you shot one because you couldn't afford to just that would have been wasting the film so you know it's like and you know and it's just so much more you can do now or you can just see something cool over there and, and just shoot it now but back then you didn't because if you didn't think you could sell it you didn't shoot it because it was just, it was, it was just expensive. So, and I was very poor back then. So. Yeah. Very humble beginnings. Right. Back yes, in the, yes, was, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was well, sleeping in a truck. And I mean, the, before I even got a Capri camper and I mean, whenever I got a, my first Capri camper, I mean, I thought I was just, had just, I mean, I was high rolling then, you know, and then I was in a Capri for like 14 years before I, before I moved up to a motor home. And it was like, and in the Capri, I had a, I had a dark room in there. I could sit there and print my proof sheets off and the whole Capri camper would be filled up with, uh, with proof sheets and everything smelt like developer in there. And, and it was like, and that's, that's how you did it. I mean, that was just the way it was. So. 
But I love your insight because that's the stuff that people don't stop and think about when they think about the evolution of rodeo, the evolution of sports. They forget about the contract personnel, the ones that have to be there from start to finish before, during, and after the performances. They don't get to take a break. Um, and so I love your insight there. And I love what you said too um, about you thought you had made it when you got the Capri Camper. Talk about your your humble beginnings there even more. I mean, you you were living life, you were doing it. What was I? And I don't know in that in that phase of your life, what were some of the best memories that you remember? Oh, I love I just I love going to the rodeos, seeing everybody. What's even better? Think what's better is now is what happens now because a lot of those people that I was shooting photos of back then, whenever let's say. Some well, actually, some of the people that I shot pictures of at high school rodeos back then, I'm taking pictures of their kids now, you know. And it's like, and and like all my friends, like all their all their uh their um their I'm shooting pictures of them now. Like like let's say the very very first um thing I ever shot was a uh, was a little bull riding in Rusk, uh, which is where I'm from, and. Uh, Luke Thrash, it's two of the uh, two of the young uh, bareback riders now and everything. Luke Thrash, uh, his daddy was uh, the uh, stock contractor at it. So, so here you are, somebody who the very first thing I ever shot as far as a rodeo, his son. I'm shooting pictures of him in the PRCA now, and then I was shooting pictures from outside the the fence on the very first one or two, and then Jimmy Graham, uh, he was like, "Won't you get inside?" It's like you think they'll mind. And he's like, "Nah, ain't gonna mind." Well, that there is Colt Demons, Granddaddy. So, uh, so I mean, there's two people right now I'm shooting in the, in the who are young uh, bareback riders who they had kin folks at the very, very first thing I ever shot in my life. So, so it was like that's what's really fun is being able to see see uh, kids of people that I shot back then. In the full circle moment there, and and I guess while you brought this up, let's talk a little bit about that because um, I think at the MBHA Youth World Show World Finals. Um, there's a picture on your social media that really jumped out to me. I loved it. You have all these kids surrounding you in your little <laughs> office space setup area at the rodeo and you named it, uh, Piper's nursery. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, cause when you go there, it looks like a nursery. I mean, we got like three or four different, uh, the deals where you put the kids in and everything there. Cause like, I don't know what it is about in the water right now, but like everybody that works for me has little kids right now. I mean, we got, I mean, we got, we got, uh, we got Megan uh, uh, Dillard, who uh, her husband uh, used to ride bulls, and her brother Shane Hanchi. Uh, like she, she's got two, and she's got one on the way right now. Uh, uh, we got the other group we're going bear hunting with. Uh, she's got one and got one on the way right now. We got Daniel Beckendorf, who uh, worked for me. He's got two. I mean, that was that. Uh, who else is? I may be missing some other kids that were there. <laughs> I mean, there was a whole bunch of kids there and everything. So yeah, we got we got, we have a whole huge, huge, and it looks like a nursery. I mean, there are kids everywhere running around this booth. So uh, <laughs> it's a lot. You know, honestly though, there's there's something to that because like you starting in fifth grade, there's those kids are looking up to you and being raised in rodeo, being raised at those events. There's there's a lot of good that comes out of that. Um, I'm a walking testimony of that. Just you know, being raised in, in stock shows and rodeos, you get some kind of uh, value out of that. Um, the, the kids are just so much better. They um, have more manners. So I love what you're doing there. Keep that up. That's really <laughs> encouraging. <laughs> um, and I I didn't, I want to back it up just a little bit before we get too, too much more into it. I should have asked you in this in the very beginning and I apologize for that, but I'm yeah. genuinely curious and I know a lot of people are out there. Um, how did pho uh, photography by Pfeiffer, Rodeo Bum Photos, how did that all get started? Tell us the story there. Okay, as far as the rodeo bum part, yeah, yeah, because most people don't know about that, really don't understand. They just think it's just something I just pulled out of the top of my head and everything. Well, like I said, my brother he rode bareback horses uh, whenever I, whenever, whenever he was young, and like I said, I was a little bitty kid then because he's nine years older than me. And um, one year, and then my mother did not like him riding bareback horses. She did not like it. She tried everything she could do to keep me from rodeo. She really did. She did not. She's good with it now. Cause like every, I mean, we got so many people in the family now rodeo and it's like, she did not want me ride, uh, rodeoing and everything. But one year at, uh, at Thanksgiving, this is probably 93, 94, somewhere around there. Uh, but uh, we were, we were all around everything. And me and my brother was talking. I said, well, isn't this just kind of crazy? I said, I said, mama tried, mama didn't like you rodeoing. And she tried everything she could do to keep me from rodeo. And I said, and then look who become the rodeo bum. And we all laughed and everything. Well, 
then for Christmas, my brother, he, uh, his wife was working at a cap company over in Rusk and, uh, and they made a cap for me and everything. And it was like, and she did it. He, he went over and they like basically went to the scrap pile and grabbed everything they could do to get, to make like the ugliest cap in the entire world and everything. Like literally it's the ugliest cap in the world and everything. And it had rodeo bum on it. And it was like, oh, it's right here. I pulled it out just so I could, so, but this right here, <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, it's horrible. And then it's like done with like some kind of classic writing and it's got my phone number from back then <laughs> on it and everything. It was horrible, but it was so funny. And we laughed, we thought it was so funny. And, uh, uh, and it was like, and I said, right then, I said, I said, I said, I said, well, one of these days, if I end up coming something big and everything, I said, that'll become the, the, uh, the, uh, mother name of all my companies or something like that there, you know, and you got to remember this is nine, three, nine, four. I didn't even know there was such a thing as internet there. I mean, it was like no idea that there was even an internet. Well, then when everything went digital and I got a, I got a website that uh, I checked it, I just did it as a joke looking in and it was actually available. And I thought, Oh man. And I went through a whole bunch of different, di I mean, I'm talking about, I had a list, a huge list, writing them down. And I would literally uh, like get, I would literally write it on a piece of paper, the different names and I would hold it up to people like this right here and go, okay. And then put it down. It's like, do you know what that said? And can you spell it? Because I know nobody can spell Pfeiffer for sure. So it could never, because I've had people go like, why do you put like, like, like photos by Pfeiffer is your website. And it was like, I was like, can you spell Pfeiffer for sure? And they were like, <laughs> no. So, and that's literally what it came. And I mean, I, I, we measured it out to where it would go on my, on my deal and I pinned them up, just making sure everything was like, you could dang sure see it, like with the length on it and everything was like that there. And then that's the one I, and I kept just going back to rodeo about it. So it was like, so that's, that's actually how it got started was all because of a joke. So <laughs> Well, honestly, I love that. And let's take a second then to, to appreciate that ball cap. Amazing. Thank you for showing it to us. <laughs> wow. And it, it's bright pink, right? Did I see that right? Oh, it's bright. oh yeah. It's, <laughs> it's bright pink. It's bright pink with like a milk cow. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean, an amazing it, it's story. It's got this weird like rope deal on there. Oh, it's like said, it's some kind of, I don't know what you'd even call that there. I mean, it was some kind of rubberized like deal to make it i mean it was like they literally went through the deal to make it the world's ugliest cap i mean i, I don't even i mean they didn't even they didn't even make these match or anything just trying no. to make it as they, ugly as can be they, they did you that dirty. is how it all began so <laughs> well i i do love that because even with the kids i know you do a lot of youth rodeo photography and the kids love that something about rodeo bomb i remember hearing it as a kid myself and thinking like oh that's cool he must be really cool you know um <laughs> and now as i um, i've gotten older i'm no longer a kid anymore i still look up to you because i see you at these big prestigious professional rodeos american nfr all these places and I'm like, wow, to think that you started so long ago, sleeping in your truck, you've made it to these big stages, big lights. Talk to us about your, your time frame, your career there, maybe some highlights that have um, stepped out to you, reached out to you um, in terms of rodeos that you've gotten to shoot at, maybe potential rodeos that you'd love to talk about that. Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, Fort Worth, of course, is my favorite rodeo there is because, I mean, it's Fort Worth. I mean, that's just it's Fort Worth. So, I mean, that's, that, that is by far my, my most favorite there. I think I've done it for the last 17 years. Wow. And then, uh, I've shot the NFR, I've shot the steer open finals, uh, eight time love the steer open finals. Uh, absolutely love the steer open finals. I've done the WPRA finals, uh, off and on through the years. I think I've done the WPRA like 12 or 13 times. I um, mean, I've done it whenever it was in Fort Worth back in the early nineties. And then later, uh, whenever it was in Tulsa, and then now while it's in Waco, I've been shooting it uh, ever since uh, for several years now. It's been back in Waco, but I think it's like twelve or thirteen years that I've that I've shot the WPRA finals, and uh, just just all kinds of rodeos all across the country. I mean, I love them. I mean, I mean, about a third of my rodeos are, are pro rodeos, about a third of them are youth rodeos, and a third of them are barrel racing. So I'm uh, kind of got a good variety there. So, and it's like, and I like it. And like I said, I love doing the youth rodeos because they're, you know, seeing the kids, you know, and then, you know, and then, and then doing the barrel racings that gets me to go over east and everything that got that being able to do the NBA chase that they really got it to where I could go over uh, east coast and see a different part of the country because at the beginning, 
I was doing so much stuff out west. Well, then now I do a lot of stuff out east and everything because of that right there. And your schedule is so jam-packed and so busy. How do you keep it all straight? As I told somebody, I'm not I'm not a photographer. I'm a logistics manager is what I am. We have light, we have equipment that rolls in different directions. And it's, and it's not just me. It's like, I mean, I have other photographers that they work for me, but they also have their own companies. But then sometimes I need some of their companies, to, uh, some of their equipment to be able to do something like the Little Bridge's finals. I mean, we have 53 lights up. I mean, it's just a huge amount of lights that all come together at one time. And then sometimes we need stuff in certain places. And it's like, sometimes we got, we got, we got equipment on vehicles going in different directions. Well, one year I know we had, we had, uh, Andy Watson, had, uh, I'd helped Andy at the PBR finals and he had some of my lights because he needed some to be able to shoot that many arenas. And then he just kept those. And he had, uh, uh, another photographer coming in from, from Corpus. Well, he came up there and when that photographer left there, he came down to lose, I'd left, I'd left there and went to Louisiana and he brought those lights back to me. But while that was going on, uh, Daniel was shooting an MBHA in Fort Worth over at the stockyards, but it was my, actually my lights working for Andy was using my lights over in the stockyards. So Daniel was using my lights there. Well, Aunt Daniel, he threw his lights on a, on a truck and they went from there to Illinois where he needed them. And then they went to Vegas and then they went to New York and then I picked them up in New York. So I mean, these, we had lights going in every direction all over the country because it's just so many of us and we need so much equipment that, and you don't need that much equipment all year long, but there's certain rodeos like for Andy, for the PBR finals, for me, for Little Bridge's finals, you know, and then it's like, and other photographers and we all let, we're good friends uh, and we let each other borrow our equipment and everything because we know that they need equipment all over, you know, because you can't afford to just have that many. And we just, we're just got equipment rolling all over the country. So, yeah. That <laughs> is, I'm so glad that you brought that up because just like in the sport of rodeo, I mean, you see cowboys traveling all across the United States, worldwide, Canada, Mexico, Brazil. And um, most of the time they travel together, they have, you know, travel impacts, and then they turn right around and compete against each other. And that's really the same throughout the whole entire industry. And I think a lot of people um, either take that for granted or they forget about the little stuff like that. So especially for you guys being photographers, where I guess in theory, you guys could be considered in competition of each other if you're trying to bid for the same rodeos at some point in time. And that does happen but you guys still band together and choose to help each other for the greater good in every situation. And so I really, really love and respect and appreciate that. And that goes for rodeo announcers too, sharing stats with each other. That goes for time men getting, you know, making sure they have all the right rules and they're up to date on all the stuff, score guys, judges. It's just incredible. Um, that's my hats off to you. That That is so, so awesome that you're able to do that. And I think we're almost out of time. So I want to kind of continue this conversation along a little bit. And talk about the different, um, I know you mentioned NFR and, and you're so humble. Um, that's like the biggest rodeo. It's a Super Bowl of rodeos for anyone out there that's curious about the NFR. I know most of the listeners here know what it is, but it's such a, a big stage, such a prestigious title to even be selected to shoot anywhere near around the NFR. And so talk about that for a little bit. Talk about um, the logistics there, what it's like, your day-to-day -day schedule. Um, love it, hate it, pros, cons, all of it. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great. I mean, I love shooting NFR. I haven't shot in the last two years and everything, but it was like, but the years that I've had to shoot it, yeah, you got, uh, like, um, uh, if you was behind the scenes photographer, it's just insane. You're just going in every direction all over. I mean, you don't know all the different little things we would have, we would have to go shoot. And then if you're shooting in the arena, then you have to be messing with your lights every day. You got, you have to hang, uh, like, uh, there's, there's lights you got to hang. You got to be adjusting on those every day. You have to shoot uh, headshots. Um, there's there's the big group photos. There's all kind of things going on that people don't don't realize that we have to shoot. Besides that, there and then doing all the just the just sitting there on the computer and getting the stuff out to different people who need things like you may get a like uh, the main thing would be as far as being able to do like that there is somebody get injured and, and then Justin uh, sports medicine uh, injury report come out. And then all of a sudden you get a, you get a phone call from, from the PRCA and go, Hey, we need a photo of so-and-so because, because they're, they're injured and we got to put a press release out there from uh, Justin sports medicine. So, so we just jump on there and get them, get them a photo real quick. So that they have, a, so that the PRCA would have a photo for a press release that somebody was injured. 
And that's a lot of stress. How do you juggle all the stress in the, in the middle of the chaos of the rodeo there? I know, I know there's a lot of adrenaline, but how do you juggle it all? It's just what, what, what I've always done. I mean, you just, it's just what you do. You just got to keep, I mean, and then the good thing about me doing like youth rodeos, sometimes with the pro rodeos, some people go like, how do you handle it whenever there's just something like just everything just changes all of a sudden it's, there's no, there's such a sudden change. And I was like, well, I shoot rodeos. Or I see you, I shoot youth rodeos. And I said, and stuff changes at the very last minute. It's like, you're just used to it. If you're shooting youth rodeos, it's like, nobody tells you anything. You just go, and they just go, Oh, by the way, we're going to shoot this big group photo over here today. And it's like, all right, we'll just go do it and everything, you know, cause things change at youth rodeos so that prepares you for doing the big pro rodeos to where when all of a sudden just like just plop something out there and like oh we forgot to tell you you know the main part of it is we're going to take a photo but yeah we forgot to tell the photographer so happens all the time <laughs> happens all the time you're absolutely right I'm, I'm just looking back and thinking about all the events that I've been a part of on the production side and everything will be set to go and and someone will say okay where's the photographer you didn't call him no you didn't call him um, so I know that all too well, all the time. <laughs> and that's, that's really funny and, and really cool too, that you're able to just jump and do it and be flexible. I mean, that's kind of what the industry is about the sport of rodeo in general. Um, and that's really cool too, but along those same lines, in order to get to the NFR, you have to do a lot. You have to, um, not only be a PRCA photographer, but then you have to be nominated. Is that correct? Is that uh, right? No, actually for the, for the nominating deal, that's for the photographer of the year. Okay. That's far, but then as far as uh, being selected, you actually apply for it and then oh, uh, wow. the committee picks who the photographer is. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, so you have to jump through so many hoops just to get there. Um, but before that, like I mentioned, you had to um, apply for your car, buy, buy your car. Talk to us about that. I know there's a lot of photographers out there that are interested in potentially maybe applying to be a professional rodeo photographer. Um, mm -hmm. What's your best advice there? What are the steps? All of it. Well, what the, the main thing is, is so many people think they want to just go straight to here and everything well it's just like being a bull rider or calf roper or anything like that there it's like don't skip through all them parts right there because your learning part is going to youth rodeos going to amateur rodeos just like you are at, you know doing a, being a contestant people think you need to just jump straight to that like oh i went and shot a little backyard bull riding and stuff and then i'm gonna jump straight to having a prca car in order to be able to handle the financial part of it and everything and just knowing the business of it really need to know and then even just honing down the photography you really need to shoot a lot of youth rodeos and amateur rodeos because um if they don't know because i mean there's just certain things i mean you got to be in a certain place and there are certain places you need to be just for the fact that you just to be out of the way and then also the fact that that's the that's the best angle that you can get the big largest percentage of shots uh to be in that certain spot uh i mean there's some there's some cool low percentage uh, shots and everything. You get some really cool photos, but if you're really, if you're going to do it for a living, you got to kind of make it in, in a way where you can really, really uh, the most potential of, of taking, taking the best shots and then mainly just staying out of the way. Cause that's one thing for you to not make money, but for you to get in the way and you cost somebody like a world championship, because you don't understand you can't be right there. I mean, like, let's say you were sitting there like one time at uh, the national final steer rope. And I mean, we, uh, I mean, Scott Snedeker was like, he was, he was in the average, in the average and everything. And I had a steer come and it was just like, I just squeezed up against the wall, just didn't move at all. And that steer, just, and he got him tripped right beside me. And it was like, but it was like, I knew it was like, I can't move. And I just had to stay there in order to make sure. Cause if I'd have just jumped up and run, he could have, it could have, it could have, it could have cost him the world. I mean, so you, you got to know that there and you got to, you got to understand that about rodeo and you got to be able to sit there and read the stock to go like, you know, or, you know, am I in trouble or not? You know, cause it's like, I mean, it, and it takes time going to the, the, the lower rodeos in order to know that stuff right there. So. And James, I respect that so much. I, you know, I, I um, was a rodeo queen and that's how I got to know you, but um, growing up as a rodeo queen and then more specifically getting more involved with professional rodeo as a rodeo queen, 
there are, um, the professional word should not be taken lightly. Everyone in the organization is professional. Those rodeo competitors have paved their way, worked harder. They have more, um, just grit to them, um, that they're professional. It's no longer amateur. And so that is a big pet peeve of mine. If you're out there listening, you just heard my pet peeve. And James, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because yes, you do. It is so important. No matter what your position is in the rodeo yeah. arena, um, at, around, near at all, um, you just need to be aware of your, your surroundings and know, um, what's about to happen. And along those same lines, I'm sure you've had many opportunities where um, a rough stock horse or a buck and bull has come a little bit too close to you, or you've had a, some kind of rodeo wrecks for yourself. <laughs> so I guess that now's your time. Tell me some stories about um, sometimes that you might've been trampled, or maybe you've seen people get trampled. What, what about that? Tell us about it all. Oh, let's see. I guess about the very first really, really big kind of deal that got me was uh, I was at a bull riding in Belleville, Texas. And it was the second bull lap, the second one. And it was like, um, it was about to hook a guy and then a bull turn. Didn't get him, got me, cut my finger off. They uh, uh, got to the fence and everything. It's hanging off to the side and everything. And and then drove myself to the, to the, to the hospital. And then um, they sewed it back on. I got back out there, shot the rest of the bull riding, and then <laughs> and then come to find out it was it was a guy who uh, I was living in Huntsville at the time, and uh, the guy sent me across the campus. He said he said, "Are you the photographer?" And I was like, "Yeah." And uh, me and him became friends for years and years and years. And, and like I said, and I basically prevented him from getting hooked on the photo I got is just insane. Like everybody goes, "Oh, he must have got it." I was like, "Nope, got me." And uh, and then he was he was uh, back when we were in college. I knew that in his in his in his in his house he had like a set of drums and everything in there but it was like i just thought he just played around i didn't know it was any good and everything but uh but anyway his uh, name's randy grimes and he became later on he was the drummer for uh, billy joe shaver so uh so it was like that was pretty cool so uh and that's how me and him got to know him like he didn't even never met me before that moment right there and then of course i think the one that most people know about is whenever i got run over by the barrel horse at the mbha youth world and 2015 so uh that broke my uh my scapula in half my shoulder blade broke it in half and uh uh went to the hospital they wrapped it up whatever come back so uh we didn't we never missed a, we never missed a uh we missed two runs is all we missed uh one of the girls that worked for me she was shooting the backdrop i caught her over there and i was like go get my camera because my camera and lens first time it was the first time in like 20 something years that anything had ever gotten my gotten my equipment and everything broke it in half she ran out there and got it got a new deal and while they were wrapping me up and everything i'm putting the camera together and uh and then she sits down there and she uh she gets it fixed uh, uh uh she does a test shot i go no like i adjusted the camera and it was like okay now i can go to the hospital and then went to the hospital come back i was on my way back and i was like i told her i said hey tell seth my boy i said tell him to go get uh my tripod and she said what do you need she went oh god she said you're gonna shoot ain't she? and i was like well of course i am so shot another uh 250 uh runs that day and then the next day shot the short go and then yeah so did that there and then it was later on whenever they went to take it off that's when they realized uh how bad it was and everything and then and then but then justin sports medicine jumped in there and and uh sent me to uh to shane barton over in shreveport and he was a justin sports medicine doctor and just i mean did it up he uh did surgery on me on september 23rd of 2015 and 10 weeks later i was at the nfr shoot oh my gosh i have no words other than mad respect that, well, and that is... was my very first year to have the NFR. That was the very first year I had the NFR. And I got the phone, when I got the phone call to doing it, I did, I was, I was still in a, in a, in a uh, shoulder sling and I had to pull over to make sure I didn't wreck. Cause I seen it was a PRC. I was like, Ooh, what if this is the call? And I get it and everything. And they tell me, but like I said, and then they, then I find out I'm going to have surgery a few weeks later. And then I told him, I said, I've got to be ready. And he said, we will have you ready. So, so yeah, they, they, put me back together and everything and boom, we're shooting. So <laughs> you truly are a rodeo bum. I mean, you've experienced the cowboy life as a true cowboy, just for, photo, you know, <laughs> taking photos of the rodeo. Wow, James, <laughs> <laughs> I I did not know any of those stories. And it's, it's actually really crazy that you've had 
your fair share of run-ins with the big, mean, rough stock, and that it took a, a barrel horse, a fast, crazy <laughs> barrel horse. That's so yeah. on brand, right? With, with, a 15, with a 15-year-old riding it. So, oh <laughs> and it was just a fluke, and it was just a fluke accident. But yes, yes, it was it was it was a barrel horse at a youth at a youth barrel race and it took me out. <laughs> <laughs> gosh <laughs> yeah what are the odds of that that's so yeah. so bizarre wow that that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad that you live to tell the tales though that's what it's all about right you know you well, it, and, 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 and 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 uh and mark uh uh, uh bert he, he got a good video too so there's video out there you know so <laughs> You're going to go viral again. We're going to resurface this video. I would love to see oh, it. It's out there. It's out there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> what a, wow. What a, um, what a, what a time, what a trip, what memories. And that's so cool that you were able to be tough, you know, tough it up just like a cowboy would. Like I said, that's wow. <laughs> um, I don't even, you got me there. That's so incredible. <laughs> Um, it's just, it's just so bizarre to see the opportunities that, that this career has taken you. And even as a fifth grader that started taking photos on a vacation, um, that's so inspiring for a lot of people out there. There's, there's tons of people that are so hungry to be involved in the industry in some way. And so what would be, before we go, what would be your best advice to give to anyone that wants to be a photographer in general or a rodeo photographer in general, or, you know, cause you've already covered the PRCA thing. Um, but in general, like what what would you tell them if they're let's say a hobby for photographist right now or photographer right now um what would you what would advice would you give them to like make the next step to start getting clients and getting paid for those clients the main thing is like i said as far as rodeo go to the youth rodeos the uh, uh amateur rodeos and then also uh quit uh or don't motor drive really slow down and pay attention to what your actual, the actual animals are doing because it'll make them so much better of a photographer if they actually understand what the animal's about to do because i mean you literally kind of need to know what it's going to do you got to have the experience in order to make sure uh, what the animal's actually going to do before it actually does it but that there takes slowing down shooting one photo at a time just really concentrate on what the actual animal and learn the animals i mean learn the animals and learn the events. I mean, learn and learn what the Cowboys really want is the one thing too, because I mean, it does no good to do it. If, if, the, if the contestants, that's not what the contestants are looking for. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're shooting it from some angle that makes it to where, you know, the calf horse doesn't look as good or, you know, whatever. So, you know, and the stock contractors really want, and then also signage too. I mean, we're, I mean, you're, from what I'm doing, I'm shooting for rodeo committees and they really need to make sure that I'm shooting in a place that has good signage. Sometimes I'll even move just a little bit in order to get a little bit better crowd situation in the background because, I mean, you don't want it to look like there's um, nobody in the crowd, you know, I mean, so sometimes it is. that there. Yeah, it is an art and you've mastered it. In my opinion, I remember, um, the Douglas County fair and rodeo back in 2018, when I was Miss Rodeo, Oklahoma, I got to have like a small moment of your time. I think it was Debbie Mills and I, we were just talking to you and the stories that you were just spitting out right then and there were incredible. I could tell your wisdom, but, um, even now getting to follow your journal journey through the little Bridges finals, get, you know, getting to watch you be one of the photographers at the NFR, I am so inspired. And um, there's a lot of people out there too that that agree. And because you're behind the camera, you don't get a lot of opportunities to be in the limelight. So I just wanted to say hats off to you. I commend you so much. Thank you for everything that you've done for the industry. Um, you've gotten some historic photos that people will be able to cherish for the rest of their lives. And then their their ancestors, you know, uh, leading on their legacy, will get to see them as well. Um, so what a cool opportunity you have. I wish you the best of luck in the future with your other rodeos. And um, if anyone out there wants to follow you on social media or check out your website, where should we send them to? Uh, my, it's rodeobum.com on Facebook. And then on Instagram, it's rodeobum.com, but without the dot, it just, you can't put a dot in the, in the part. So basically it's rodeobum.com. So, 
is okay uh, yeah uh, if, if you guys want to catch up on the the bear hunt if you want to see what it's <laughs> like like what rodeo is like from the perspective of james there's lots of fun content his humor is hilarious i wish we had way more time to talk about everything i've loved watching um you got to go fishing with um who was that oh goodness you get to go fishing all the time but um <laughs> you go fishing in between rodeos with all the different world champions um you just get really cool opportunities to shoot celebrities musicians whoever's at the rodeo um so yeah if you guys are out there and you're um, curious, you want to follow along, you have questions about photography, becoming a, a professional photographer of any sort, um, don't be afraid to reach out, send him messages. Um, James is a really, really high class guy. And James, we, we just cannot say thank you so much enough for being on the team, Justin, and wearing the brand so proudly. You do a really good job and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Kick Your Boots Up. I'm your host, Taylor McAdams, and we can't wait to share the next story of the West. Until then, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Follow us on social media at Justin Boots to keep up with our next episode. And we'll see you the next time you kick your boots up.